President Muhammadu Buhari has said that Tuesday's attack on the Nigerian Defense Academy will not discourage the military or its determination to bring an end to the criminality in the country. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, President Muhammadu Buhari's government has ordered more anti-riot weapons from China to quell civil unrest across Nigeria. The Minister of Police Affairs, Mohamed Dinyadi, disclosed this on Tuesday. Dinyadi further stated that the ministry had signed a contract with the government of China to supply police anti-riot equipment. According to him, the equipment, when supplied, would further enhance the operations of the police to quell civil unrest. According to him, Buhari's administration has also provided police officers with more protective helmets, drugs and bulletproof vests. At number 9, the Nigeria Meteorological Agency has predicted three days of flash flood across the country from Tuesday to Thursday. This was made known in a statement by NIMET spokesman Muntari Ibrahim, who warned of slim chances of flash floods across 34 states for three days. He said it could affect states such as Sokoto, Zamfara, Katsina, Kaduna, Kano, Jigawa, Bauchi, Gombe, Yobe, Kebi, Niger, and FCT. Others include Plateau, Adamawa, Taraba, Kwara, Oyo, Lagos, Ondo, Ogun, Edo, Delta, Bayosa, Crush River, Akwaibom, Benue, Enugu, Eboi, Imo, Anambra, Abia, and Rivers. NIMET further advised Nigerians not to treat the current update lightly. At number 8, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons has announced the rescue of 104 victims of human trafficking who were on their way to Europe through Libya. The Director General of NAPTIP, Senator Bashar Garba Mohamed, made this known on Tuesday in Abuja. Mohamed also disclosed that eight human trafficking suspects were arrested in the process, while efforts are ongoing to apprehend other members of the trafficking syndicates. At number 7, Kathy Hokul has been appointed as the new governor of New York following the resignation of Andrew Cuomo, who has been accused of sexually harassing women. With the appointment, Hokul is the first woman to hold the position of governor in New York. New York Chief Judge Janet DeFeer conducted the swearing-in ceremony on Tuesday at the state capitol, making 62-year-old Hokul the 57th governor of New York. At number 6, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency says it has seized 2 million kilograms of different hard drugs worth 100 billion naira from Nigerians from January 2021 till date. The NDLEA chairman, Brigadier General Buba Marowa, disclosed this in Yola, Adamawa State, while on a condolence visit to the family of late Ahmed Joda. Marowa said the usage of hard drugs in the society has become most worrisome and calls for concerns among critical stakeholders. He also said poverty has remained the major cause why our youths get involved in drug peddling and trafficking, and presently a kilo of these hard drugs worth about $400 in the street. At number 5, the World Bank has paused payments for its project in Afghanistan in the wake of the Taliban takeover. A spokesperson of the World Bank, who disclosed this in Washington, said, We have paused disbursements in our operations in Afghanistan and we are closely monitoring and assessing the situation in line with our internal policies and procedures. As we do so, we will continue to consult closely with the international community and development partners. The World Bank has been an important sponsor of development projects for Afghanistan, which was one of the poorest countries in the world. The organization says it has provided aid to Afghanistan from 2002 to April 2021, totaling almost $5 billion. Last week, the International Monetary Fund, also based in Washington, announced that it would suspend cooperation with Afghanistan until further notice. At number four, the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control has warned Nigerians against using poisonous substances such as snipers, formalin and others in food processing and preservation as the practice is dangerous to human health and could even lead to death. The Director General of NAVDAC, Professor Mojishola Adeyeye, gave the warning on Tuesday at the flag off of the National Public Awareness Campaign held at the Double Four Event Center in Bauchi State. Adeyeye, who was represented at the event by the agency's Director of Planning, Research and Statistics, Fori Tatama, revealed that NAVDAC has discovered that many fish and meat sellers use formalin to preserve their products, even though formalin is used to preserve dead bodies. She also said that Sniper, a poisonous chemical, is also being used to preserve kilishi by sellers in some parts of the country. The NAVDAC boss advised Nigerians to be wary of red palm oil as traders add a dangerous chemical called azo dye to make it reddish. 
ADAS said the agency has also uncovered the use of kerosene or fuel tankers to convey vegetable oils to the markets. She warned that persons caught indulging in any of these dangerous acts would be made to face the full wrath of the law. At number three, governors elected on the platform of the People's Democratic Party have summoned an emergency meeting to find solutions to the fresh crisis rocking the party. The summon was contained in a statement signed by the PDP Governors Forum Director General, CID Madwabum, released on Wednesday. The statement is titled, PDP Governors Summon Emergency Meeting Again at Abuja. The emergency meeting is scheduled to hold on Thursday, August 26, 2021 at 5 p.m. The statement revealed the meeting will discuss recent developments in the opposition party. At number two, the governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong, has confirmed that 10 persons have been arrested in connection with the attacks on Yelwa Zangam community in just north local government area of the state by unknown gunmen on Tuesday night. Some gunmen invaded and attacked the community at about 9 p.m., close to the permanent site of the University of Joss, killing about 35 people. It was gathered that the attack happened despite the dusk to dawn curfew imposed in Joss North as well as Joss South and Basa local government areas. The attackers reportedly shot sporadically, gunning down fleeing residents and burning some others within their homes. It was also gathered that before the incident, the fragile bridge linking the community to other communities was destroyed to prevent help from coming to the people. In a statement signed and released on Wednesday by Lalong's Director of Press and Public Affairs, Macham Makut, the governor warned that those behind the killings would not go unpunished. Finally, at number one, President Muhammad Buhari has said that Tuesday's attack on the Nigerian Defense Academy will not discourage the military or its determination to bring an end to the criminality in the country. Buhari's assurance was contained in a statement released on Wednesday by his special advisor on media and publicity, Femi Adishino, titled, Attack on NDA won't dampen resolve of our military to bring decisive end to criminality, President Buhari vows. The president noted that the attack which led to the loss of lives of officers came at a time the military had put insurgents, bandits, kidnappers and other types of criminals on the retreat. Buhari commiserated with families who lost their loved ones and vowed that the deceased would not die in vain as the wicked act would have consequences. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands and stay safe. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.